Hello YouTube, my name is Lucas and today I'll be showing you how to make an amazing display effect using a combination of ferrofluids and electromagnets. Let's begin! Now my objectives with this project was to create a platform that's very cheap and accessible to biohackers and makers so that they can start playing around with fluids and chemistry protocols. Um, so if you're familiar with uh, microfluidics and digital microfluidics, discreetly moving fluid like this has a lot of advantages. But right now, current chips often have very short lifetimes and are very expensive, requiring clean room access often. With using electromagnets and ferrofluids, you can get accomplish very similar things using hardware that is less than $50. And you could probably even make this cheaper. So I hope that this will give you an introduction and get you excited about the potentials of digital microfluidics and ferrofluids in general. For making the electromagnets, I recommend Chicago screws. They're great for holding the magnetic wire in place and mounting onto a PCB, as I've done here. So this is the PCB I used. I laser cut six holes right in the center that match the diameter of my Chicago screws so that I could directly mount my electromagnets to my circuit board. Now I use 28 gauge uh, magnet wire uh, for this because I was able to get a good amount of coils. I think I might have gone a little bit above the specs, so maybe a thicker gauge would be good. But simply you just wrap the coil around the copper screw uh, a bunch of times and you should be good. So I skipped ahead here to when I finish wrapping the coil. It doesn't take long, just a couple minutes. Uh, make sure you get as many uh, coils as you want. And yeah, this is what it should look like when you're finished. Next attach the electromagnet to the PCB by removing the coil, um, placing the head through the PCB, and then reattaching the coil in the top of the copper screw. Now place the magnet wire through the PCB in a row and column based way. Leave space also along the edges because we will be adding a Schottky diode to every individual electromagnet. The magnet wire is surrounded by an insulative layer that we need to get rid of before we can solder. So to do this, I use the back edge of a razor blade. I found the front edge was a little too sharp and would accidentally cut the wire. Finally, solder the shaved uh, magnet wire on the side facing the electromagnet. Now I skipped ahead to once I've done six different electromagnets, so you can see how I'm soldering them. So I'm soldering each individual row together, but leaving the columns separate, and that's because I'm going to add a Schottky diode across each column to avoid backwards current. I skipped ahead again after I finished all six, so you can see each row is soldered on together. All the columns are left separate. Now solder a Schottky diode to each individual wire that we're going to be attaching the columns to. I'm using 1N5819. It needs to be 1 amp rated, and the reason we're using Schottky diode is we want to have as little voltage drop as possible in order to maximize the amount of current we can draw. Once all the Schottky diodes are in place, solder the ground ends together, because uh, we're going to treat it as one giant column. Like I said, we're going to be addressing this in a row column based matrix. Finally, solder ground and uh, high voltage leads to the different rows and columns. Once your circuit is complete, you should have something that looks like this. Attach it to a power supply. Make sure that you have a constant current limit of around 1 amp because this will just go to infinity depending on what your max voltage is. Let's give her a test run. I've connected row 1, column 2, uh, and when the electromagnet is on this position, it sticks, and as soon as I turn the power supply off, it turns off. Now I put ferrofluid and suspended it in uh, 3 quarters soapy water, 1 quarter rubbing alcohol. Uh, too much soapy water and you see this film form at the top. Uh, too much isopropanol and you'll see it starting to stain. So here's a good mixture. Probably could add a little more water so that it stains a little less, but it's getting some pretty nice peaks. This is all running with constant current of 1 amp, and the voltage is ranging from 2 to 3 volts depending on the electromagnet. Alright, so that concludes today's video. In the next one, I will show you how to make the rest of the circuit so you can, can digitally control them to make some really cool effects, and uh, yeah, show you some software that you can use to help with that.